What's going on guys? I'm finally back up here at the shop at Grafton Archery. I'm pumped because I can finally bring you some more bow reviews. Today's video is going to be all about the new PSE Mach 30 DS. What a bow this is. So the PSE Mach 30 DS, this is the EC2 cam on this particular bow. Like all the bows that I test, 70 pounds, 27 inch draw. Uh, and I tested this bow in the let off that it came from out of the box, which was at 90%, but I did draw it back and shoot it a couple times at 80% just to see the difference. So we'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, this bow in particular is one that um, this paint scheme kind of drew my attention whenever we were at the ATA show this year. Uh, so I went out, went over, talked to the guys at PSE and actually shot this bow. And a 100% best carbon bow that I've ever shot from PSE. Um, as soon as I shot the bow, as soon as I drew it back and shot it, it feels nothing like the carbons of the past couple years that PSE have came out with. Um, the PSE Mach 34 also shoots really good, but I don't have one of those here in the shop to test and shoot to give a review. So I'm just going to review their 30 inch bow. There's a couple different options you can get this bow in as far as cams go, but I'm only speaking to the EC2 cam because that's the only one that I've shot. It's also the one that I shot at the ATA show. So let's go ahead and jump on into some of the features that PSE says they have on this bow and uh, then we'll get into my scoring and um, what I thought about it. Um, so they're saying these new bows, this one as well as the Mach 34, have what they call the FDS system, which is full draw stability. So what they're saying on here is the full draw stability system is designed to provide the most stable shooting experience possible due to increasing effective brace height. FDS actively resist introduced torque leading to increased accuracy when it matters most at full draw. I believe essentially it's saying that when you're at full draw, if you go to induce torque on this bow one way or the other, it's supposed to resist that more. I don't really know. It doesn't say or, or point to a picture here what it actually does as far as, um, what they've done to this bow to make it that way. Um, I don't know. So if one of you guys know, comment down below and let us know. Uh, and maybe I'll, I'll add it into the video and talk about it at a later date. But right now I really don't know, like it sounds good. Uh, and in theory it should be good. Um, I will say that this bow tested as far as shootability score goes, tested lower than most of the other 30 inch bows that I tested this year. But when I shot this bow, it felt like a longer bow and it shot very well. It, it held great. So there may be something to it. I just don't know exactly what they're saying they did to this bow to create this uh, full draw stability. They have a new spacer system, which is really cool. There's a little tool. You can pull these spacers out. Uh, they're called the EZ.220 uh, Snap Spacer System. Uh, it says it allows for quick bow tuning and cam lean, adjust, a cam lean adjustment, less time in the bow press, and more in the field. Spacers are easily removed and repositioned on a pressed bow. Uh, allows cam shifts in precise uh, 20 thousandths increments. Uh, revolutionary axle system prevents... Uh, over tightening of the axle screws and which is the primary cause of a bear of bearing wear seen on most other competitors bows um, When I initially saw the new spacer system I thought they were going to be able to be changed without putting the bow in the press um, But according to PSE you need to put this bow in the press to change those However, you don't have to pull the axles all the way out 
which is really nice because if you're if you've worked on bows in the past uh, you know how aggravating it is to mess with those clips uh, and spacers and all this other stuff so these things essentially snap in on your axles and there's a little tool that they have that allows you to get them in and out uh, it's a really nice little system as far as cam lean uh, and moving your um, cams right or left to try to get paper tears out of, or tears out of your uh, arrow tuning. Most of the time, PSE doesn't tend to have too much trouble with uh, cam lean. I know it said you can change your cam lean. More often than not, they don't have trouble with them. Uh, and I'm using my phone because I'm not really familiar with the terminology from PSE as far as the things that they say they've got on these bows. And I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Their limb pockets are what they're calling their PSE limb vice pocket system. Engineered to provide superior stability through an improved limb locking system, the limbs, limb pivots tighten against the handle surface to ensure the pocket remains centered over the riser regardless of limb bolt position. Okay, so all that's saying there is uh, where your limb pockets ride over the center of your riser uh, or where your riser centers that limb pocket, that actually rides right there. It's, it's just essentially making sure that your riser and your limb stay centered on each other. All right, so that's about it for um, what PSC is saying is new on this bow. As far as specs go, this bow is going to come in eight different colorways. Uh, like I said, this is their EC2 cam system, uh, which to me, I really like this cam system. It's very smooth. It's not extraordinarily fast. It's got an IBO of 338. 30 inches axle to axle, 6 inch brace. Measure both of those pretty well dead on the money there. Comes in 80 to 90% let off, uh, which is adjustable on the back of your mods. Um, which is a sweet little system there. Hoyt also has that, um, and I really like that adjustability uh, on these bows. 3.6 pounds is what this bow weighs without the little front stabilizer installed. Uh, 24 and a half to 30 inch draw length, that's what this bow is available in. I would say if you're a smaller frame person, you want a really light bow, uh, I would probably say this is going to be one of your better options on the market if price isn't a um, an issue. This bow would be very, very suited to somebody that's a smaller frame person with a shorter draw length that wants a really light bow. If that's the combo that you're looking for, this bow may be for you. It comes in 50 to 80 pounds. Uh, you got to get different sets of limbs. Each set of limbs is going to be 10 pound increments, so 50, 60, 70, 80, and so on. Um, this bow, like I said, is at 70 pounds. So uh, this is the only one that I can speak to on how it shoots. This bow actually only drew 68.7 pounds. Let's talk about a couple other things on this bow that I noticed um, that really weren't in PSE's um, or it wasn't on PSE's website, the grip. So I actually like the way shooting off the riser feels on these PSE's. But if you do not, they do have a grip. They have some adjustable grip options uh, that can mount on this riser. You'll, there's a screw hole on each side of this uh, riser here that you can mount those. Uh, you'll probably see those on John Dudley's uh, YouTube channel. I know I've seen him shooting those before, but it just has, it's just an option for a narrow grip, but it's adjustable on your heel angle and stuff like that. So... Uh, from there, like I said, there is an integrated uh, bracket for integrated rest there. Your Hamskis, your QADs, they're going to fit on this bow. There is an integrated bracket for, um, or a Picatinny bracket on the front of this bow for your um, sights. Um, and if you look at this sight, this pick mount here on the front of the PSE, it can flip one way or the other. I know why they did this. They have it offset to the right um, off the riser and the reason they did that is because a lot of people have issues um, with their sights not moving far enough to the right um, when they shoot the center mounted uh, center riser mounted sights just like like the bridge locks or the uh, pick mount sights a lot of times you won't have a quite enough uh, right hand adjustment so that's why they do that all right, so for shootability, uh, out of a 10 possible points, this bow got a five. Reason behind that, 
Axle to axle measured in at 30 inches. The riser on this bow from top of the riser to top of the riser measured 26 inches, almost on the dot. Uh, brace height measured six inches on the dot. And then your reflex. A lot of people think the reflex is essentially just a, a measurement that doesn't matter, but I want to give it to you because it is a measurement. So reflex two and three quarters. Of the carbon bows that I've tested this year, this one had the highest reflex amount um, of any of the carbons. It's quite a bit, uh, but we'll get into, as, as far as like actually shooting this bow, we'll get into that here in a minute. But it scored a total or a total measurement of 59 and a quarter and a score of five. So for tunability, uh, this bow got a seven on tunability and here's why. So your cams left and right, like we talked about, you do have to press that to get that adjusted, but those clips are easy to adjust, uh, and get in and out. And it's a really nice system. Your limb pockets are not adjustable. There's only really a couple bows out there that are adjustable, but this one is not, uh, your draw length is adjustable in half inch increments, your grip. There is an adjustable grip for this bow. It's not currently installed, but there is one. Let off is adjustable on the bow without putting it in a press, 80, 85, and 90%. Um, timing, you do have to put this bow in a press to adjust the timing, uh, which it is what it is. Uh, strings and cables, you can't change the strings and cables without putting the bow in a press. Um, that's pretty, common there uh, integrated rest it does it does have an option for that and it does have an option for an integrated site so for tunability i give this bow a seven out of ten draw cycle is very smooth this this bow is a dream as far as the draw cycle goes i gave it a nine uh let all, let down uh i gave a nine because now reason where's the reason for that at 90 percent it is a little bit harder to let that bow down because the valley is so deep. So you got to let that bow down and it's, it's just, there's nothing there, nothing there. All of a sudden it grabs, but when it does grab, it doesn't just yank your shoulder off. It, it, it eases into it pretty good. But when you go to 80%, which is where I would probably shoot this bow anyway, it's you're there great valley and you just let it right down. So let down, which is for me critical at a hunting bow. Uh, I gave it a nine. Back wall, this bow is as good as any other carbon bow out there on the market. Back wall, I gave it a 10. It is super solid. You draw back, you get into it. You cannot flex that bow at all. I was very happy with that. Noise, five. It's very, very quiet. Um, vibration, a five. It's very, very quiet. The bow had very, very little vibration uh, at all. And it, but it did have a little bit of jump in the shot. And I think that's just because it's so lightweight. So you can, you can feel it want to kind of jump as you shoot, but there's no vibration there. Um, so vibration, I gave it a five, uh, speed wise. Once again, I shoot a 350 grain arrow, a, uh, what is it? 425 grain arrow and a 513 grain arrow at 30 inches and at 27 inches. Both of these, or both are normally shot at 70 pounds. This bow only uh, specced out at 68, I think it was 68.6 or something like that. With the 350 grain arrow, 27 inch draw, 295, and I got 331 uh, with the 350 grain arrow at 30 inches. So pretty close, and that was shot on the Garmin Zero. So any of y'all that give me a hard time about the chronograph, you can go on with it because that was shot with the new Garmin Zero. And those numbers were within one foot a second of the old Caldwell chronograph that I've been using for the last couple of years that everybody hates on and says it's out of spec. So I'm not going down that tangent, but 331, PSE said 338. That's pretty close, so I'm happy with those results. 425 grain arrow, this bow shot 271.7 and 305. And then 513 grain arrow, this bow shot 247.6 and 279.2. So if you're a guy that shoots 30 inch draw, this bow's still shooting the arrow, a 513 grain arrow, 
at almost 280 feet a second. I mean, you might as well say 280 feet a second. So it's no slouch as far as speed goes, and I gave it a nine. These speeds that I've got on these charts, this is for hunting bows. So if you're in that range, hey, more power to you. That's gonna be a really good shooting bow. Uh, for somebody like myself, uh, at that 27 inch draw, roughly that 425 grain arrow that I like to shoot, I, right now I'm shooting a 430 grain arrow. It's definitely no speed bow. Um, the bow that I'm currently shooting, which is the Matthews Lift 29 and a half, with a 430 grain arrow uh, at 75 pounds, I'm shooting 290. So take five off, say two, two feet a second per pound. That puts me down around the 280 mark. And this bow here is shooting 271.7 with a 425. So probably 10 feet a second or so different than the hunting bow that I currently shoot. But 270 feet a second is still uh, a good range for a hunting bow for the weight. This is the lightest carbon bow out there right now, 3.6 pounds. And you can definitely tell it, it is super, super light. Uh, if you like a very lightweight bow, you're probably going to like this bow balance the bow balances well it's not the best balancing bow out there but it does balance extremely well in the hand uh just bare bow so i gave it a four um and then accessories you've got integrated sight mount integrated rest mount uh, there's no integrated stabilizer but you do have front and back stabilizer holes uh, for like a back bar side bar or whatever uh, and then you got a, a specialty quiver that for especially uh, designed for the PSEs, so I gave it a point there. And then there is a integrated bow stand that's available for the, or there is a bow stand that kind of integrates right into your stabilizer system for this bow. We don't have any here in the shop, um, but there is a stand available for this bow. So I gave it a four on integrated accessories. Price kind of takes a hit on price. This bow is eighteen hundred dollars um, bare bow. So get your wallet out, get your pocketbook out. It's an expensive bow, but I do personally think that carbons are worth what they want for them. So that gives us a total score of 79, which is an awesome score for a hunting bow like this. All right, so how does that score correlate to you for somebody that's wanting to buy a hunting bow? I will say that as of right now, I have one more carbon bow to shoot from Bowtech, the carbon bow from Bowtech this year. I haven't shot it yet, but of the carbon bows that I've shot this year, I will tell you this, this one has been my favorite. And that's saying something. Uh, for years, Hoyt has been up here and everybody else has kind of been down here trying to catch up to Hoyt on the carbon bows. This is the first year that I really feel like PSE is right there neck and neck with Hoyt on their carbons. It's the deadest in the hand that I've shot. It's the quietest, um, smoothest carbon that I've shot, especially from PSE. Uh, the RX-8 and this bow are, are really neck and neck as far as it's gonna come down to preference. That's really gonna be it, your preference. Uh, I think where the RX-8 is probably going to pull away from the PSE, just in my personal opinion, is with integrated accessories. Their integrated accessories, in my opinion, are a lot nicer than PSEs, but just bare bow, bows right beside each other, which one would I pick? 100%, I would pick this Mach 30 DS this year. It was quieter than the RX-8 by just a little margin. Uh, it's less vibration by slight margin than the RX-8, in my opinion. Uh, it draws just slightly smoother um, and it shoots so good. So I was back there in the back shooting this bow with no sight, no nothing. And just every, when I would get in there, this bow just felt so good in my hands. Um, so it should be a very accurate shooting bow. I have not loaded this bow up and shot it at distance. I may be completely wrong, but just what I shot there in the back, I really feel like this bow, even though it got a low score on shootability, I think it's gonna be a really good shooting bow. So where do I think this bow is gonna fit as far as like who is this bow gonna be for? I would say if you're somebody that likes a 30 inch bow, uh, you definitely need to take a look at this one. If you have the money to spend on a carbon bow, 
This bow is going to be really hard to beat in that 30 inch axle to axle range. Uh, it is, like I said, 1800 bucks. But if you have the money, uh, I would definitely recommend shooting this bow. It's going to be a great, great bow for the 2024 season. Uh, the fact that it's carbon, like I've said before, uh, makes it warmer to the touch. So if you're somebody that hunts in extremely cold weather that doesn't like to shoot with gloves, like myself, I really do appreciate that in a carbon bow, the fact that it stays a little warmer to the touch. Really where you're getting the benefit of the carbon, warmth to the touch and um, stiffness in the riser. The carbon riser are a little bit stiffer than aluminum and the lightness, 3.6 pounds uh, for somebody that's smaller framed or somebody like myself that likes to backcountry elk hunt that wants something that's gonna be lightweight. This may be a really good bow for you. Uh, if you're somebody that likes a really smooth draw cycle and doesn't care a whole lot about how fast you're shooting, uh, you could set this bow up at 90% let off and uh, use this EC2 cam for that smooth draw cycle and maybe even go down to 60 pounds and this bow would shoot like an absolute dream. So there's plenty of options where this bow would be a great bow um, for somebody that's out there hunting. I would say personally, this bow is going to really specialize in that range of like a whitetail hunter that wants to hunt out to 50 yard, 40 or 50 yards. Um, I don't know how accurate this bow will be at extreme distances. Um, I've not shot the bow out to distance. The specs on it say that it may not be that great, but I know from being there in there in the back how well it shot at 20 yards. Um, so I'm not taking anything away from this bow. But if you're somebody that wants to shoot out there a long distance, especially out west where it's kind of windy, you may want to look into something maybe a little bit heavier or a little bit longer or both. Because I do think the wind's going to blow this bow around quite a bit because it is so light and so short. But with that being said, guys, this is my review on this bow. My favorite carbon bow that I've shot to date in 2024 so far this would be the carbon that I would be taking into the woods if I were going to shoot a carbon bow this year. Take that with a grain of salt, guys. I'm no pro. I just am a hunter that uh, wants to bring you some bow reviews and bring you some good knowledge and hopefully help you in your decision and buying a bow this year. If you don't have a bow or you're interested in coming and checking out these bows, come up here to the shop uh, at, and, or give these guys a call at 704-855-1300. Uh, check these guys out. If they have, if you have any questions archer related, they'll be more than happy to help you. More than happy to steer you in the right direction. If you have anything for me, please comment down below, guys. Please like and subscribe. That really helps the channel. Please comment. Comment what you guys want to see on the channel. And uh, if you have any issues with the way I score these things, let me know. As long as it's constructive and it's not tearing me down, uh, I really enjoy to see the constructive um, things that you guys comment on the channel uh, like i said love bringing these videos to you guys we'll catch you on the next one remember to live your life to the fullest and use your passions to bless others we'll see you later